Okay guys, let's break this down. How am I able to understand native content and I still can't kill this bird? Something something needs to change. And so today, <laughs> let's let's try this. The funny thing is is I do the same test every time. It's the same like it's the same oh my god, I went far. Wow, Duolingo looks weird. The thing is the same it's the same test every single time, right? It doesn't change and so I keep failing at the same test. It's the story of my life. Chidi learn Swahili, Rashidi that means like he no normally learns Swahili. Tukacheza na tukaruka. We play and we jump. Easy. Let's keep moving. What? We played. This is no 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 part of this is the past tense. I'd like to discuss this. <laughs> I've never oh my god, you can discuss things. I've never been on this side of Julingo. Exactly. Yeah, it can be correct, but you'd have to you'd have to have another word showing that it's the past tense, like nili nilikua na pika. Nakapika or something like that, right? Right. Joke man. Cold like ice. As cold as ice. Can you see this? Are you guys are you guys seeing this? To singalikua na pesa to singalikwenda na that does that's not used that much. No, what do you mean? <laughs> He cooks his Anna Picker, who Picker means like he, she, they, everything normally cooks. What did you say? Umoja. I don't care if I can, I don't care if I have 60,000 words. If I don't kill this bird, this, this journey to Swahili has not been completed. Even though I'm like however months in, I am now in Swahili, like there's still some, there's still some words, there's still some concepts that I like still don't get. Um, like, and when I look at them, I like, I identify it like, still don't really understand what this means like possibly in context context like i can kind of get it but like even at this point there's still there's still structures there's still uses of things that i still don't get like even things that are quite simple i would say that like um like even even rules that are used quite often but just used in a different way in certain contexts i still don't know like why it's used there like it has a different meaning in a different context like for example putting key after the first sound usually means if like if I was going to do something, say Nikki, whatever. Um, but sometimes it's just used when it's not if, like just randomly, and I don't really know why. Another thing is that I, I'm continuously noticing new things as well. I feel like now the things that I'm noticing when I'm listening to native content is like subtleties in the language. They're not necessarily the big kind of like, you know, tenses or, you know, things that, that you kind of get in the first few months, right? These are kind of just like subtleties, the way they, the way they use, um, the way they repeat things. Um, so they they won't they won't just say to go they'd say to go go, possibly not with the verb to go but you get the idea and like what does that mean what is it emphasizing, um, things to do with their rhythm of speech as well sounds as well not just like um, not just words but just sounds in the middle and what they kind of mean like for example they say eh and like that's kind of like um, like you agree with what someone says um, like they've kind of hit the spot they've kind of like said exactly what you were thinking uh, and it's interesting like the noticing at this phase I feel like is a bit more intricate. Um, I'm picking up kind of smaller subtleties. Okay guys, so just a little update on the content that I'm using for my active study. As you guys know, I've been using this, this Doce Wele, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, radio dramas, audio and text, lovely. And as you guys know, it's like there's so much content. But I'm nearing the end. I think I'm in my last, last like five lessons here. And so I went to the link that they had up here to find the more, to find more, just like I said I was going to. And I found a lot more. I found almost the same amount more. Um, and I've had to separate it to see what like this course had and what it didn't and so I've been making my own just trying to like separate and organize it but the problem is is that it takes a really long time so essentially I have to go to their website download the audio download the thing and um, and then copy and paste it and it's copies and pasted in a really weird way so like when you come to the lesson it's like I've sorted this one out in the first one but if you go all the way to the to the bottom you can see like it doesn't fill the entire page and that's really annoying um, and I don't know if I'll have time to sort that out because that takes a long time as well. I feel like this is part of language learning that's not spoken about a lot, like collecting your resources and making it so that it works. I remember with Spanish, I had to like do the same thing with the Duolingo podcast. Um, 
Netflix was easy, just Link makes Link makes life easy. But like here, you have to copy and paste it, and it takes a really long time with the audio and everything. And so, and just with the amount of time that I have, I really want to do it. But I think I'm gonna have to keep them like this because realistically, I can still use them like this. It's just kind of like unpleasant. But yeah, like guys, honestly, there's a lot of content. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. So I don't know how long how long I'll be doing this this um, this content, but I don't care. Like I think it, actually now it's probably gonna push me for another month and a half to two months again, which is lovely to have so much time within the B two kind of like era um, with co with content with text and audio. So that's lovely. I'm really happy about that. In terms of passive, I've been trying to listen to them at the same time, um, but I think now I understand too much of native material <laughs> to kind of listen to the same thing again. Um, and I found more podcasts. Now that I can use the language to search for podcasts, a whole world has opened up. Um, and so I've learned, I've learned one thing about resource collection, that when you're collecting resources, you're really trying to focus on text and audio material that's for beginners lower intermediates and like middle intermediate kind of stuff because beyond that um you really want to especially native content that you're using passively um you can find that once you have a good like you you can always find native content later on once you can use the language to search and i always find that that's much more effective or like that's what i found now also i forgot to mention because i don't really have time to add new lessons in what i've been doing just to keep my advance just to keep my like daily streak kind of going I've been doing, I've went back to the children's stories actually, and I've been doing these, um, the percentage of unknown, unknown words in them was actually the same, it was like around, you know, 20%, and now I really am at 20% unknown words with my content, which is like the, like the bare minimum that I really want, because I do really feel like I'm not seeing these words with enough frequency, which I know is natural to happen at this phase, because of course it's like the end of the B2 phase, so like, you know, the words have lower frequency, like what are you going to do, but yeah, I've been, I've been doing the children's stories, and they've been okay. They've been, they have weird vocab in them, you know, like animals, things that you don't really see in normal speech. And I've, I also went back to these Canadian stories and I finished the last 10, um, which I hadn't finished before. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting to go back to like beginner content because it's very slow and you're just like, come on, let's keep, let's keep the show on the road. Okay, I think that's it for that. Hapo zamani zakale. Hello everyone, long time no see, <laughs> it's exam season, it was exam season like for the past couple of weeks so yeah, but Swahili's still going strong, I'm still studying. So it's it's week 38 now, so that means like it's around 9 months, like where I'm at right now. Um, it's hard for me not to compare how I feel and where I'm at with Spanish, but I'm gonna get to that in a bit. So starting with active, uh, last time it was 150 hours and 33 minutes. And this time I did on 28 hours and 14 minutes, making 178 hours and 47 minutes. I have to say with Active, I've been, I've been decreasing my time, especially during the exam period. Like it went from half an hour a day to like maybe one article, like eight minutes a day, 10, 15 minutes a day. So it went down for like a weekish. Um, and then when I came back up, I didn't like increase it. I went kind of back to half an hour a day. So Active hasn't, hasn't been as as high as it could be. One of the problems I've been having with Active is that in Spanish, when I was using the TV show Bolivar what would happen is that I'd have the subtitle just for that scene, right? But right now when I'm listening to this, it, it seems like a silly like thing to talk about, but like when I'm listening, I can see the entire article, right? So my mind, I just kind of want to go down and move all the words that I know to known. It's like the obsession with that number. <laughs> um, and so I kind of, because I'm just like, oh, I, I can follow this along. But actually I, I miss, I miss where, where I was at because of course the audio is continuing. Essentially, it's not a good idea and I should just kind of focus and actually for the past week I've been forcing myself to focus again on the Like on the text and audio like following the story along and I do actually feel like my comprehension is increasing and I feel like it's much more effective So that's just something to focus on from now on because yeah Trying to get of course as much juice as I can out of the half an hour that I have because I really do just have half an hour Okay guys, so as you know, I've been I've been at this. I've been there Okay Okay guys, so as you know, I've been using this content and I've been filling it up. So, Dolce Vele, I've been using this one. I finished, I finished these two um, and now I'm on this one halfway through. And I think I have like two to three weeks left of it, right? Um, I see it, by the way, on the, at the unknown, percent, unknown words percentage. That's how I know where I'm at. So I just go down until it starts getting higher. Um, but I found a complete, the UN website has an unlimited amount of of content with audio and 
video and as you can see here you can literally choose whether you want the audio on like you just to see articles with audio or just to see articles with video or both and so essentially this means that I have an unlimited amount of content because there's just so much and so Glossika is an option I'm not sure to which extent I'm going to use it but here it is um, don't know why that's in a different script um, but yeah but yeah I'm really happy now because this basically means that my Swahili is kind of set for good as long as I keep listening and reading I'm going to continue my word counts going to continue to increase and life shall be good Okay, for passive, I had 194 hours and 12 minutes, and now I have 75 hours and 49 minutes, making it 270 hours and one minute. Wow, like counting it to the minute. <laughs> That's a lot, and actually I have been increasing my passive. One of the issues I have with passive is just focus. Sometimes I can focus, but I but I don't, you know what I mean? So like, I, I could be focusing, but actually I just choose to think about something else, which is not always good and I really kind of juice, I want to juice as much passive as I can. In fact, when I do that, I tend to decrease, like, because I track my time, like, I tend to decrease the amount of time I track, because I'm like, okay, there was a good three minutes there where I wasn't really focusing, just to make it, like, this, these numbers as accurate as possible. And I, I don't know if you guys face the same issue, like, when you're passive listening while you're doing something else, sometimes you just kind of, even if that other thing does, is not going to occupy that part of your brain, um, that's going to affect your language learning so you're not like writing or reading something else where obviously it's going to be very hard to follow along where I don't know you're doing something where like for me it might be cooking for example um, so that or like washing the dishes uh, that's something where you could actually kind of tune in uh, but you choose not to which is not which is not a good thing another thing I want to compare this with Spanish actually because with Spanish I don't know what was happening last year but I guess I had more time to watch videos um, and I did watch a couple of YouTube videos while actually just sitting down and watching it of course with the subtitles which is lovely with Spanish but that's not something I have with Swahili so that's something that I feel like might also be contributing to the reason why I feel like I'm going not slower with Swahili but I don't feel like this I don't feel the same as how I felt with Spanish at the same point is what I'm trying to say um, and I feel like that has something to do with it I pretty much have no time right now um, to be watching like to be sitting down and watching something um, so that's not something I do like all my passive is fit into time where I'm doing something else. Um, I was trying just to make the most out of my time and trying to get as much passive in as possible. Uh, before I do, before I go to sleep, I do have like 20-ish um, minutes of pure listening time, which is quite nice. But other than that, I'm just trying to squeeze them in and I'm not really gonna watch anything at that time either. So that's something that I feel like I'm lacking in my Spanish, in my Swahili right now. And sitting down and watching, in, just because just, just I think it's the focus more than anything else you're focusing you have the visual cues um, if you have course if you have subtitles it's just luxurious environment luxurious language learning environment for you something else with my passive is that I've actually completely left listening to the active material again I understand native content way too much now and it's really slow and I'm like if I have to if I'm gonna listen to those radio dramas again I'm gonna have to put it like 1.5 1.6x speed um, and it's, I'm not even saying that I like follow it along really well all I'm saying is that I'm not going to be listening to that <laughs> at normal speed. Uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to listen to podcasts. And actually, I found a bunch of cool, like, native podcasts that I will, if I remember. In fact, this is a reminder for me when I'm editing to put this into the description. Um, the podcast that I found. Uh, and it's really interesting how, like, how, like, you know, the more you learn the language, the more resources you find, no matter how much you do research at the start. And trust me, I mean, you guys already know from the other video, the bonus video. I did a lot of research at the start. The word count is, was 18,304 and now it's at 26,314, which means it's an in increase of 8,010. I just like to make a comment that this is actually more than what I have in Spanish. Um, and I don't feel close, like, I don't feel like how I felt like with Spanish. In fact, uh, yeah, I don't. Um, I think with Spanish I have like 25,500 something like that. So yeah, Swahili's take, I think I think Swahili will take a bit longer. It'll be interesting to see how many words would would mean that I have this kind of urge to speak because right now the urge to speak hasn't changed since last time I made a video so much. Eight weeks-ish ago, sorry guys. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see like and then I'll have a better perspective on like how, first of all, these numbers, you can't really compare them between languages. Um, and also just get an idea of like how many words does it actually take to to be comfortable in Swahili um, obviously with the way that these words are, 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 are counted let's jump to the graph and I'll show you the graph right now before I remember in my last video I said that I feel like I'm going getting at that kind of like upper intermediate plateau I was very very wrong about that I continue to 
increased. So it was like, I think it was literally like a day or two after that video. <laughs> things just start, the word count started to increase again. So that was like completely incorrect. Um, and yeah, I'm still at this acceleratory phase. And you can see that here, there's a little dip, like at the end, towards the end, there's a little dip. That's not because, or like a plateau-ish. That's not because, um, that's not because the word, low, the words were of lower frequency or anything. That was just because of the exam period. So I was studying less. And as I said before, um, but now I feel like I'm still at this acceleration. I don't really feel like my word, like the new words that I'm learning is any less the the percentage the percentage of unknown words for every article is staying really constant at around 20 ish percent um so so yeah I'm, I'm still in it you know what i mean i'm still in the intermediate thing i don't know when i don't know how long it will take for me to get to the end um and i don't mind so much because now i have great content to, to continue it so it's all good okay so the big question really is where do i go from here because i have i have a couple of options first of all as you guys know i haven't i haven't had a supplement one of the biggest reasons for a supplement, I don't know if I mentioned this before, is literally just to give yourself something different to do. So you're not just reading and listening all the time. Um, even if the content's interesting, or even even if you just have one type of content-ish like I have, um, just having something different, a different platform, it's, it's just, it, 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 it adds some spice to your language learning. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I think you need that. So that's something that I've been lacking. So right now, looking at where I wanna go, Glossica is an option because I've used Glossica before for Spanish it wasn't hugely successful. I feel like my thing was weird, but it's something different and it's more audio and it's more text content. Like, why not? It costs, but I feel like I'll only pay for one month and then I'll probably finish it given my experience with Spanish earlier than that and then leave it. So that is that is an option to explore. Yeah, I can just do like um, five sentences a day um, and then I can go and re listen and read again. That'll be a nice balance. But at the same time, I don't want to pay for something that I kind of know I don't really really need. The thing, Duolingo is not an option anymore, it's just, yeah obviously it's, it's, it's going to be too slow even though I, I'm not able to, to complete it, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit slow of course. I think my plan essentially is to go through, to finish this uh, Dolce Vele radio drama series and then move on to the UN articles and keep using the UN articles for as much for as long as possible and then when I get to a phase where I feel like it's really inefficient i.e you know I'm learning like two new words per article like you know I'm, I'm kind of wasting my time continuing with it when I get to that point hopefully the urge to speak would be really high at that point as well when I get to that point then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my known word count list on OP Lingo uh, the site that I'm using and then just go through it all possibly while passively listening and tick off all the words that I know and I have to like no know it if, it, if it's half half just leave it and then then I'll have um, a collection of words that either I don't know what they mean because we couldn't find a definition because that sometimes happens or words that um, I don't know or I'm learning and then I can put them in an Anki deck and then possibly take Anki seriously for once. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just continuing, honestly. Um, what pu pushed me through this phase in Spanish was just the content. Um, what's pushing me through now in Swahili, I think more so was just seeing my progress, understanding more. And I think the UN articles will be really interesting.